Hello everyone and welcome to Art Starts Explores. My name is Kay Slater and I am the Gallery Coordinator and Preparator at Art Starts in Schools. I am delighted to be back with you making for another week for Art Starts Explores Folding. And this is week one of three weeks that we will be uh, exploring folding together. For week one, um, we're going to really just be very basic. We're going to have a very simple setup this week. And so um, what I was thinking was just a piece of paper and some mark making tools. So for paper, it's whatever you can find. I always encourage you to go to the recycling bin. Um, I found some colored paper, an already folded piece of blue paper, oh, that has writing on it, and then a couple of other printed paper that had writing on it, so some white paper, and then a page out of the sketchbook that had some drawing on it already. And I wanted to try this, this paper this week because this the paper for my sketchbook is a bit thicker than these pages, these kind of printer paper pages, just to see what happens. So if you found uh, brown paper or craft paper, an envelope, maybe uh, some cardboard even, any kind of paper that you can find um, is gonna be just great. And then a mark making tool. So usually for explorers, for mark making tools, I usually use a marker. And the reason I use a marker is because of the contrast, because it's easier for you to see in my drawing area right here, the black marker on whatever surface. But this week I'm gonna change it up a little. So I still got my marker here, but I also pulled out this tin that I have and I've had it for a really long time. It's all dented up, to, it's an old mint tin. And in here I have various pieces of charcoal and chalk um, and um, graphite. So this is basically the same stuff that what's in a, uh, is in a pencil, but it's a block of it. And I'm going to be using a bunch of these uh, this week just to, just to change it up and to try it out. But anything that you can find that will make a mark, I'm going to leave that open. Anything that you can find that will leave a mark from a pencil to pencil crayons, to crayons, um, lipstick, pudding, <laughs> anything you have permission to make a mark with, why not try it? Because that's the whole point of explorers. We want to ask, what happens if I do a thing so that next time I want to try something, I have that knowledge? So I'm going to move some of these stickies out of the way so we have a little bit more room to explore together. Leave that there. I'll put that over there. And so that is and so that is what we're working on today. We're going to see what happens when we fold and we make a mark. And that's all we're trying to do. We don't have any big goals. We're not going to make anything in particular. We're just going to see what happens when we fold. So for me, I think the first thing that I'm gonna try is I'm gonna start with halves because that's the kind of fold that we do the most often. And I'm gonna take a second, I'm gonna look at it. And what do I notice about this piece of paper? Because usually when we fold a piece of paper in half, we're not really paying attention to what happens to the fold. We already have something in mind. So whether that's for folding a piece of paper in half to make it into a booklet or folding it in half so we can make a nice crease so that we can cut or rip along it and make two pieces. But have you ever stopped after folding a piece of paper in half and just looked at what happens to the paper? Well, I kind of like this curve that happens here. And it's nice and sharp, the point here, just like the sharp the point down here. Whereas if I didn't fold the paper, right, I wouldn't have that sharp edge there. Oh, I also notice it stands up, whereas that paper does not. 
Okay, so by folding it, the paper has some structure, as in it's going to stand up straight. So I now know that this spine here, when I fold something, that makes this more stable. The point makes a really cool shape. What if I lay it flat? Do you notice anything? Mine isn't sitting really, really flat because I haven't pushed over here. Push this down a little bit more. It sits pretty flat. From where I'm sitting, and you might not be able to see, but if you're folding wherever you're making, you might be able to see, you still get kind of this lip at the edge here. It kind of reminds me of a mouth. And I'm going to talk with my paper mouth, <laughs> right? This is us just having no expectations and seeing what happens when we play with folding. And I've only folded it once. What's gonna happen when we keep folding it? Okay, before I keep folding, actually, I'm gonna unfold it and see what happens. What do you notice? With your one fold so far, what do you notice? Well, I noticed the crease where I folded and it seems to go into the page here. If I was to flip it over, the crease where I creased it, the paper is kind of popping up here, and it looks like the paper is coming up where I creased it. Okay, so before I keep folding, I think I want to make some marks and see what happens just for uh, interacting with the crease that I made on one side and the crease that I made on the other. I'm going to take a piece of my graphite, which is, whoop, which is bait. <laughs> it wants to slip out of my fingers. And graphite is very slippery. Um, so this is basically the stuff that's inside of a pencil. And I'm just going to color along the spine where I folded. And you know what? I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Okay. If you did this as well, what do you notice? So the thing that I noticed the most is that when I did it along the spine, the side where I folded it on the outside where it looked like it popped up, it caught the graphite. It made it darker here. And because I've cut on this surface before, I've got a whole bunch of creases and marks on this on, on my cutting board here. And so when I was, when I was doing it, um, you can see places where I've cut before the texture came through. But on the side where I folded over here, I didn't really get the same dark line as I did on this side. So what I learned was if I want to have a really nice, straight, dark mark, if I'm going to um, fold and then make a mark, I probably should color or make a mark on the side where I folded on the outside. Okay, that's one thing. Let's keep folding. All right, so we're back to folding it in half. What happens if we make a mark just on the folded side? And if you're making on a surface where um, you don't want to get messy underneath, don't forget, you should probably take a piece of paper, put it underneath, and then color from there so that you don't mess up a space that you don't mean to. Okay, here we go. So I made a mark, and I'm going to unfold it again. Okay, if you did this, what do you notice? I really like how even though there was some dirty marks over here from where I made the marks before, dirty, as in I had marked up the page. It feels kind of dirty because graphite gets everywhere and so I described it as dirty, but really even though there are marks on this side, it wasn't clean, it didn't have any, or it wasn't a brand new piece of paper, it still looks like there's nothing on this side compared to how dark this side is. So if I wanted a really crisp line where, um, where it was light on one side and dark on the other side, all I would have to do is fold it. And then you see how I, I tried to press pretty evenly along all where I was doing the marks, but it ended up looking a lot darker 
towards the edge compared to the outside. And that's probably because remember when we were talking about folding and this making a spine, how it comes up? When we folded it over, the spine probably came up just a little bit, just enough that it caught more of my mark making tool than on this side. Really cool. All right, I'm gonna keep going. I'm gonna fold it back over again. You don't have to fold the same as me. As you're going along and you're exploring your piece of paper, you might already have folds, or you might not be ready to make a mark yet, or you don't wanna fold anymore because you're still coloring and marking up the edges of where you folded because you still have questions of what happens if I do the thing that you're doing. Okay, I think I'm gonna fold this in half again. And I folded it so that the open edges of the paper are still sticking out on the outside. I could have folded it this way. Maybe I will later. But I started by folding it in half again so that there are still those open edges on the outside. But you know what? Now that I know that I've got these open edges on the side, I think I'm going to make some marks on both sides to see the difference between what happens if I mark along this thick spine here. And what happens when I mark along the open edge where there isn't a spine, but it's kind of overlapped now where the paper is there. Okay, so check it out. What do we notice? I'm just gonna unwrap it the whole way. You can keep looking. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not. I'm gonna, that's, that's going ahead. So first I'm gonna start like this. Well, what I notice about this page is that I got the same thing as when I folded over on this edge here, because this is where I folded the spine. So we already knew that that was going to be darker along here. I pushed too hard on my mark making tool here. And so I ended up having a line that I drew um, instead of just making the mark, but that's okay. It's fine to make a mark, right? What happens when we mark and fold? But then along here, where it was the edge where it wasn't actually folded up, where there wasn't a spine and it was the edge of the paper, it did the same thing as over here where I got this really sharp edge and it was kind of darker along the outside. And that's really cool. So I don't have to fold it here. I could also use unfolded paper around the outside of the edge of the paper to get it to be a little darker. Okay, now I'm gonna unfold it. And I'm gonna unfold it all the way. Okay. So this part over here, we haven't made any intentional marks yet. We haven't taken our mark making tool and drawn specifically on it. I've gone over it a little bit up here where it was folded together, because I guess I, I went over the edge a little bit or maybe it smudged, but in general, it's pretty clean along here. And, and you can really see that dark spot of where I folded it. Does this line or this line look darker? And this line over here, I feel like it does, but I think I might've pushed a little bit harder on mine. What about you? What are you noticing about your folded page? So for this side, I folded it so that this spine came up over here. But to do that, it meant that this side ended up having the inside crease. So just like when I folded the page in half, right? So when I folded it like this with the book this way, and this spine ended up being something that if you ran your finger along it, you could really feel the, um, the spine sticking up. Oh, cool, look. So because it does stick up and the graphite that's on my finger, if I run my finger along it, it does something similar to that spine over there where it makes it darker. 
I don't even have to draw it. It's just, it's just um, capturing more pigment from my fingers than the other one did. Cool. Okay, but I was saying this, so this one, it comes down, right? So it, it, it creates a valley rather than creating a peak that happened when I fold it this way. So now that's the inside edge. So before when we flipped it over, we really didn't notice anything, but now I'm gonna color over here. Come on, I've got another piece of paper under this time. So now all those cuts that I had when I was um, making the marks um, directly on my cutting board aren't showing up the same way. And you know what? I'm going to keep going. So for that first time we folded, you really couldn't see the spine where I folded it on the inside. But this time, I can see it. Right? So it wasn't very clear on this side. What if I did it now on another piece of paper? Nope, still doesn't really show up. Oh, it shows up a little. Oh, I can tell it, tell more. Oh, when I mark make the whole part here, can you see the X? Can you see the cross? The spine of where, where I folded it? It's subtler. It's less dark on this side than it is on this side. So I'm starting to get some really cool marks and I've only folded the page twice. All right, let's keep going. I'm gonna go back this way and I'm gonna refold the way that I had it folded. And just like when I first folded the first time, I'm gonna look at the paper now and not the marks. So we already knew that it had more structure. It would stand up if we folded it in half and it still looks like we, if you fold it in quarters, it'll still stand up. Yep, both sides. Yep, it'll still stand up. But now, even though it still has those cool little mouth shapes, now I can have two mouths, one over here, one over here, and then they both talk at the same time as me. <laughs> so then we've got those cool shapes that we, we noticed, but now we've got all these open areas up here. When you look at it like this, what does it remind you of? When I look at it like this, I've kind of started to see a flower, like a tulip almost, right? So here are the petals on the outside. What if I was to fold, but not crease, right? So I'm folding the paper, but I'm not pushing down on it. I'm just going to fold it over. There we go. I'm going to do the same thing on this side. I'm just gently folding, not creasing the paper, creasing where I'm put, making a spine by actually pushing down and um, damaging the fibers of the paper such that, that I've always got a mark there. But this time I'm going to try and be really gentle and just kind of push the paper between my fingers and encourage it to go in that direction. There we go. That looks a bit more like a flower, right? With the, the flower petals at the side. And then what if I was to push this apart the little, the little mouth of the, the round shape that I had before. Can I do it? There we go. That kind of looks like a flower. Cool. I've also got these hidey hole spaces where I can be putting things. So it's like I've got two wallets here or two pockets. What if I was to fold this middle space together? I'm taking those two middle pieces inside. I'm just going to fold those together. Okay. So now what happens? It'll still stay up. You see, because I've got these, these rounded edges over here. Oh, kind of rocks. It stand up this way? What if I unfolded or I gently unfolded my curls down there? Would it stay up? Yep. There we go. Now what does it look like? What do I see? I kind of imagine like it's a hood. 
or maybe it's a building where this is the entrance way here where somebody can walk in. Or maybe it's a tent where this tent side is closed here, but this side is open over here that somebody could walk in. And so I'm not just seeing the paper for the marks that I made or for the folds, I'm starting to see it as an object that maybe I could play with. So bring my little uh, mini host here, coming up, hanging out beside the tent. Maybe I take another piece of paper here and I draw myself a campfire. Here's some big rocks around the outside edge. And then, uh, oops, sorry. It's okay. The wind came in, blew the tent over. Move those over the way up there. Maybe some wood. Maybe a chair around the fire. Now I've got this play area where I've actually made a folded thing that somebody can check out or come and play with. And here, can I actually fit my mini host in here? Oh, take the hat off. And, uh, uh, uh. <laughs> It's just a little tent. <laughs> it'll keep it'll keep my mini host's head warm for the night or dry if it starts to rain. Okay, so that was how many? That was I think we're at three folds now. We were at one fold for halfway across the page, right? For doing it in half, and then one fold for doing it in quarter again. So that's two folds. And then I guess you could count me curling these out on the outside to be a fold too, just didn't crease them. So three folds, four folds. And then I did crease this middle part where I pushed it in and um, kind of stapled or stuck these pages together without having, uh, without having to do any glue um, or without an actual staple. And they're not gonna come apart. So I, I, can, uh, I can keep trying and playing around um, while these are together. Oh, I also see an M. Do you see an M around the outside? So if we're now we're not looking at the full shape, we're looking just at the lines or the contours of the shape that we made. Now I see an M. Well, that's neat. Can I see any other letters as I look along? Oh, I see a V here. What else did I see? Oh, maybe an I. If I flatten the page, right? Like that. See an I. What about a T? We look just at the quarter page, right? Line. And we had to we had to fold that in half, that piece of paper, so that it could make that T that it would have that spine there. This page is folded in half here, right? Folded in half. But when I look at it here, it's harder for me to see a T there. You need to have that folded spine there. So you could play with a piece of paper and see how many different letters you could find as you fold up the page. That sounds really fun. I kind of want to try that now. So remember how I folded the middle page over here and I, I created kind of this triangle? What about, oh, here I, I can see, I can start to see a letter that would show up. Maybe A. And because we know that folding and using our mark or our mark making tool makes the lines darker, do it here as well along the top. Fold this back up again. There you go. A. I think I'll come along the edge so that's a little clearer. There we go. A. Okay, what were the letters that we found so far? We found A, we found V, we found M, we found I, we found T, maybe I or a lowercase l even. What else could we find? What about, um, I was gonna say, oh, oh, I just thought of it. I flipped it over. What about H? So remember how we saw a T here? with the line here and up there. All we need to do is 
rotate the page. And then we've got the, the, the spine here for the, um, for the bar in the center. And then the, the left line, sorry, the left ascender over here, and the right ascender. Now we got H, awesome. I guess if we flipped it like this now, we also kind of have an, a capital I. So we found a lowercase l, and then a capital I by having the line down here and the line up here. Cool. All right, let's keep going. What else can I find? Oh, <laughs> I didn't even have to change it. So I went from my A here and over to the side here. And while that line there, if we ignore that line, do you see what's happening here? I see a K. K. And so you could, here, I'll write that out. You could fold a piece of paper up and make a whole bunch of marks, and you could spell a word just putting the positioned um, paper along that you had mark made, and then you could maybe spell your name. I wonder if I could do that. So I have K, K and A. I need a Y now. Can I make a Y? Oh, yes, I can. There we go. Just clean up that fold. That's the spine there where we folded it in half. I'm going to fold it over again this way because I know that it's darker when I do it this way. There we go. So there's my Y. All right. I'm going to take this piece of paper and I'm going to make it approximately the same size as the pink. I'm going to rip this in half. Using that fold to have a nice clean spine there. Okay, so how did I do the K again? You know what? I'm going to unfold this and I'm going to copy it because I know that we were able to get it with that fold. So we started with the fold in half. I'm going to go like this way. We started with the fold in half. Then we had the fold in quarters. And if you're like me and you're using graphite, you might be getting really messy here. That's okay, because none of this is for keeps, right? We're just, we're just playing, we're just trying, we're just asking ourselves, what happens if? What happens when we do these different things? Okay, and then I folded this section in the center because of the staples, right? my, my paper, paper it here, my no, no tape uh, gluing of the middle paper. Okay, okay, right, you remember the flower there? Yep, that's looking familiar. All right, and then I unfold that. I think there was one more thing where I folded right where the triangle met the side of the paper. Yep, that, that is, that's the same folds that I did. Okay, so there's my Y. Move that over. And then I think we found the K, oh, like this. And so I'm just gonna fold this again so that we remember the spine comes out because I know that it makes a darker line like that. And then make my mark along the edge. And then make a mark along the spine. Actually, I think this time what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna color in like this because I remember it made a nice, really dark, dark line when I went like that. Yeah. And if I scribble onto other parts, that's okay. If we were making this for keeps, we'd probably go slower. Maybe we'd, again, we'd take other pieces of paper and we'd cover it so that we could get really clean lines. Maybe we'd get our eraser out, but not now. 
not while we're exploring because we're not going to keep any of this other than the pictures in our brains. Okay, there we go. There's our K or my K. I'm lucky I only have three letters in my name, so I don't have as many to do. If you had a really long name like Bethany or Pavinder, your name would be really long and you have lots of letters that you've got to deal with. But for me, it's just three. And if you have a nickname, or maybe you just want to do the first initial of your name, that's okay too. Okay, quickly, I'm going to refold again all the folds that I'd already figured out. So in half, then in half, then fold it together in the middle. You might pick really easy folds, not like me where you're trying to stuff your fingers inside there. Maybe you're just folding the outside edge and that's just fine. You don't have to make it complicated for yourself to come up with cool things to, uh, to discover and explore. And then one more, which was long here. Great. Okay. And so for this one, I think we just went in half and then folded it like that, right? And so what I learned, folding it over, so I can have that really dark line. Fold it like this. Oh, it's doing something cool this time. I think because I had already folded it. Oh, that's why. Oh yeah, so when we fold something and then we put it underneath the piece of paper. Yeah, I've got this one. So here's a folded piece. The folds come through on another piece of paper. So there's my Y. From folding another piece of paper and then mark making with another piece. So there's my Y right down there, just by taking this page and tracing it with textures. Okay, almost done. K, A, and then there we go. There's my name, K, A, Y, just using folds right? And so if I wanted to take that piece of paper here, I could absolutely trace. There's the K. There's the paper. K. And line up my A here. What I learned for tracing this time is, is the, the cross A is the cross line here is harder to see when uh, when I unfold it when I'm tracing it through another piece of paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold it here so I can have that nice hard edge again. I'm going to try to line that up. Maybe it won't be perfect. That's okay. There. Almost. Oh, I, I left that one under there. Oh, that made it more difficult. That's okay. We're just trying. We're just learning. It's okay if it messes up. If it doesn't do what we were expecting it to do, that's all right. We know for when we're going to try and make something for keeps that we have to make sure that we don't have extra things hiding underneath our paper so we can get that nice clean line. Okay, there's my A, nice and big. And then even though I put my Y at the side, I'll do it again over here. So it's in, um, in sequence. That's the other cool thing about doing these things not for keeps. You don't have to worry about it being on nice clean paper. You can totally just color on top of other things. 
my spine didn't come out really clear, so I'm going to use the edge of this paper here. That's a little better. Not perfect. That's okay. There you go. So I scribbled it on the page, K-A-Y. I have it as folded letters here, K-A-Y. Cool. And then we know all the other letters that we found in between here. You can also go back in, like just because this is what you did for folding, now that you've got these folded lines there, so there's no reason why you couldn't take something and go, okay, well, that's where that line is. So I'm going to color around it. I'm gonna make some lines around where I traced. So I'm just gonna do bubble letters on the inside here. This make that line a little darker because I'm allowed to. I'm going to leave that one like that from where I traced it, and then uh, maybe I'll make that line over here. This line wasn't really dark, so I'm going to take all of that mark there where I made it. There you go. So I've still got these cool patterns, these these cool lines, the I've activated the page because of all of these creases here. It looks more interesting than if I had just drawn the letters um, and, it, and it really feels like I put more work into um, the lines and the textures on the page. There's no reason now why I couldn't um, cut this page um, and then glue it onto the paper. Um, or just do a collage, even if I'm not, if I'm not gluing there, there's my K. Maybe I'll, I won't even rip where I fold it, but I'll leave the folds there because it's not explorers with K unless I'm ripping some paper. You know what? I could even rip up here. There's no reason why I couldn't just because it's folded over top of it itself. And there we go. And now we made a collage of the folded paper, the marks, um, and the, the page that, that I was basically just using this page before to, um, to cover my marks. I could bring it over here where this was the base of the page that had a whole bunch of other marks and I could bring it down here. Oh, and you know what? I could rip out the A There. So use my scrap paper from before that had a whole bunch of cool marks on it. And then I could keep this page and then take my A from here and put it on top or even put it underneath. There we go. JK. <laughs> There are lots of different ways that you can explore folding and we're going to keep folding and exploring together over the next three weeks. But I wanted to show you this week that you don't need a whole bunch of fancy tools to get started. Um, you don't need origami paper. You don't need fancy colored paper. You don't need clean paper. You don't even need paper that, that is uncreased. You could start with a page that already has folds and creases and then go from there. See what those folds um, encourage you to do. Look at the folds, look at the creases on the page and see what you can see. Color them in, cut them up. You don't need to start with a nice clean page to explore and see what happens uh, when you go from that starting point. I had a lot of fun this week just playing with some simple folds. I'm gonna leave my camera running like I always like to while I clean up because part of Explorers is practicing respect for our space and always putting things away when we're done. Um, and I can't wait to continue to explore with you next week when we continue with week two of folding. See you soon.